Hello and welcome back to another drawing workshop. Um, I had a whole thing planned out of additional lessons on how to draw stuff, but I realized I had not really gone over uh, art materials. <laughs> so that is what I'm going to do today. Um, so it's going to be kind of brief, but after this sort of introduction, then uh, following videos will be getting more into drawing things like figures and cartooning and stuff like that. Um, whatever you guys want to see. But today, we are just going to start with some pretty basic uh, drawing materials. And by basic, I mean basically the stuff you'll need just for pencil drawing. Um, so I'm not going to get into color or painting or anything like that. Um, this is just strictly pencil stuff. So, uh, first thing, obviously, I'm going to talk about is your pencil. <laughs> um, so I know that it can be kind of overwhelming if you're starting drawing and you want to get like a good art pencil set um, and just, you know, go ham. You can do that, of course. Uh, but if you're sort of intimidated by the choices or, you know, maybe you can't afford to get a big fancy set right now, you know what? <laughs> this is the perfect tool. Um, my favorites are Ticonderoga because of their awesome eraser. <laughs> <laughs> just a little plug there. Um, so this is just basically a school pencil. It's a number two pencil. So it's like kind of right in the middle of hardness. So you can get some pretty dark darks and some pretty light lights. And when you need to erase, boom. <laughs> um, so this is a perfectly viable um, drawing option. It is easy to sharpen. Um, you can point the lead, which is sort of the halfway point between sharpening and not. Um, if you don't want to do the full sharpen, you can just point the lead. Easy enough to do that. It is pretty easy to erase and very easy to control. So, that's my plug for just the regular darn pencil. If you feel like getting fancy, you probably are interested in art pencils. And there are so many out there. Um, so, when you get into art pencils, you're going to start to see lots of secret codes on them. So, 2H, 4B, um, this one just says extra black. That's that's fine. Get out of here, generals. Um, so basically with these, B stands for black and H stands for hard. So the harder a pencil is, the lighter it's going to be. I don't even know if you guys can see that. It's pretty light. Um, 2H. So the higher the number, the more, the more H it is. So if you had an H or an 8H, that would be extremely hard and it would make an extremely light line unless you just like jammed it into the paper. Uh, same goes for B. So 4B is reasonably B, <laughs> reasonably black and soft. Um, so if you had an, an 8B, that would be very dark and very soft. Uh, so these two are pretty close to the middle, but as you can see with this one, that's the same amount of pressure um, and it puts a much darker mark on the page. And if you really press hard, you'll get this black black. If you really press hard with this one, it's more of a silver, more of a gray. Um, so those are going to be the kind of art pencils you see that uh, contain graphite. Um, okay, the next pencil I'm going to show you is one that I actually really enjoy using, um, a mechanical pencil. You can get different uh, types of lead for these. It's a little bit harder to come by. Usually you'll just get some somewhere right in the middle. This one's pretty hard. So this is probably like a HB right here. It should tell you on the case for the lead what you're getting. Um, but you can also get colored lead. So like a blue lead or a red lead, which is uh, fun for sketching. And this next pencil I'll show you is, uh, I'll kind of explain why. Uh, words. <laughs> okay, uh, the next kind of pencil that I'm going to talk about is a colored sketching pencil. So this is different from um, kind of your wax-based um, coloring pencil. This one is double-ended, <laughs> uh, so it has a blue and a red, um, and they're very hard. Uh, and this is for sketching in color. Um, so as you can see, when you sketch in color, and then you go over in a harder pencil, or a, I'm sorry, a um, regular colored pencil. That's a graphite pencil. Geez, okay, I'm here, I'm present. <laughs> um, 
then you can see your lines and they look much cleaner kind of over over the top of your colored pencil really stumbled my way through that one all right colored pencils good for sketching let's move on <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is erasers, uh, which we kind of saw, and the first one I'm going to remind you of is the one on the back of your pencil. If you get a good pencil, <laughs> like a Ticonderoga, they have a nice soft eraser. Um, some uh, just school pencils really kind of cheap on the eraser, which always confused me, like, you need, you need it to work, guys. Um, and some will leave kind of a pink mark when you go to erase something. This one's pretty good, so you can see it's taking off the lead uh, pretty well. Uh, so that is just kind of the first eraser you will encounter. If you wear it down, boom, <laughs> you can get one of these. These are usually pretty good because that's all they're, um, all they're really for. They're made to be good, so <laughs> that should take off um, most of your lead. If you have some of these lying around and they're a bit old, then they'll kind of uh, lose their erasing abilities. So careful with those. Make sure that you use them when they're when they're fresh, and they should be good enough. Um, let's see. The next kind that you probably know are the um, just kind of standard. I guess this qualifies as a gum eraser. Um, it's just this huge pink block, uh, pink pearl. Um, when you get a little bit fancier, you'll get these um, white ones. These are usually like a magic rub or something like that. And they work pretty well. They don't leave any streaks and they really take off a lot of um, graphite, including the stuff that the pink pearl kind of leaves behind. Uh, the other kind you'll get is like the um, true art gum erasers, these big, ugly, brown, blocky ones. This one is old, so it's leaving marks on my page. Um, so that's not a really good example of one, but um, this is another kind of uh, one that you'll see in art stores. Just going to clean that up with my white one. Or not. Okay. Anyway, so these are the three kind of uh, solid block erasers that you'll find. Get those out of here. Uh, the next sort, let me just geez, clean that up, that you'll find is the kneaded eraser. Um, when I was in school, I used to like these just because they're fun to play with, but I kind of thought they were sort of useless until I realized what they were for. So these are not for picking up all of the graphite that you've put down. These are for lightening or um, doing kind of small sections. So you can, if you use them like that, erase a lot of graphite. Um, it does come up. But more importantly, if you're drawing and you're ready to, you know, kind of clean up your sketch, you can use these sort of like silly putty. They kind of pick up the graphite and they really lighten up your sketch. So if I use it here, because when you go into ink or color, you really don't need a dark sketch. You just basically need to see pretty much where your lines were. And this is perfect for that. So you can see all that that I picked up here on that eraser. And to clean it, you just sort of knead it, which is fun to do. <laughs> um, so a kneaded eraser is really great if you're doing sketching and um, you kind of want to refine a sketch or if you want to ink it or color it. This is awesome. And this will probably show up in later videos when I'm doing um, full, full art with you. Full art. Full on art. Okay. That's <laughs> Good job, Cajun. Um, Alright. The next sort that I will show you is one that I really like. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is just from Pentel, but this is a mechanical eraser. So, there is this big old stick of eraser in there. It's basically like having a never-ending pencil eraser, but it's a really good one. As you can see, it's that uh, kind of white white color so sort of like the uh, the magic rub um, type of eraser and this one is really good like <laughs> I don't know what it is Pentel knows what they're about but it, it just gets rid of everything it doesn't leave marks and um, it's a good size for me so it, it kind of has a personal preference I like these guys um, uh, two other things that I wanted to mention with erasers is let's see a cool put down some pencils so i can show you erasing a cool thing called an eraser shield 
This is used a lot by architects. I got this one when I was in a stage lighting class in college. <laughs> and it just lets you erase um, small portions. So if you have just like a tiny thing on a refined um, piece of work that you want to erase, it is awesome. <laughs> you can also use it as stencil, but for erasing just small pieces or highlights or whatever, this is really handy. So you can find this at art stores, um, online, or like uh, architecture supplies, I guess. Um, I love it. The other thing I am going to mention, because I really should be better about using it, and as you see for the entirety of this video I have not, um, this is a brush. And it is great for getting rid of eraser crumbles. Um, and the reason a brush is really good for that is because our hands are very oily, sometimes they can have graphite all over them, and if you keep doing this like I do, you are going to smudge something. Not so with a brush. Um, so you can use a soft paintbrush, or, as I am using, an old blush brush. <laughs> so I cleaned it really well so there's no makeup left on it, but it's super soft and it just it gets rid of everything and it's kind of satisfying to use, um, but yeah, you definitely have to train yourself to use this because I know it's really kind of built in to, you know, like scribble, erase, and then psh! <laughs> so try to use a brush. I am trying to get better about that. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to paper. Okay, so paper you can use for drawing. Uh, pretty much any paper. <laughs> so. This right here is um, kind of scrap paper torn out of torn out of a, a book, uh, but the most plentiful thing I find that you know, kind of when you, when you start out drawing, you have the most of this is just copy paper. That is fine. Um, it's kind of nice and smooth, so it's halfway between like a you know super smooth paper and and a sketch paper that's got more texture to it, and that's really going to be the difference in papers is kind of how much texture there is. Uh, copy paper, I I liked. You know what? Uh, I think it's fine. And plus you can um, like bind it into a sketchbook. I do have a binding video for saddle stitch if you guys want to check that out. Really good for sketchbooks. Um, so copy paper is plentiful and it works. You can use both sides. You can use the back of some old thing, old homework, old bill, whatever. Um, and it's great for just kind of hashing something out. Um, you know, it works. If you want to get a little fancier, there are so many kinds of art paper. So there is your general, um, I guess I'll call this like sketch paper. This is gonna be a little bit more textured. Um, it comes in a variety of sizes and a lot of companies. You'll find something like this. It'll usually just name on the front of the sketchbook what it is for. This is a teeny tiny one that I like to use for like um, kind of colored pencil <laughs> trials, swatches. Um, as you can see, I was figuring out skin tones. Anyway, so this kind of paper is the same as this one. This came out of a larger sketchbook. Um, so you'll see sketch paper. You'll see some that say like drawing here. That's usually a bit more textured. Uh, you can find it in tints, like you can get gray, you can get sepia, uh, you can get black if you want, why not? Um, so you'll find lots of these at like arts and crafts stores of just uh, sketch paper. Um, I do like having a fancy sketchbook. <laughs> so um, this one is super textured, um, it, it's handmade, it's just pretty, I like having it with me. Why not? You know what? It, yeah, get something pretty. <laughs> if it makes you feel good, go for it. Um, so that is also kind of sketch drawing paper. Another kind that you might run into is Bristol. So Bristol is very smooth um, and it's thick. It's it's like a cardstock. Um, it takes color well. You can, gosh, do lots of stuff on it. So drawing, pen and ink. Um, a lot of people use it for like inking. Um, so that is a super fancy one, if you feel like you want to be super fancy. <laughs> so that is paper. And the final thing that we will talk about today is sharpeners. Um, 
So there are a couple different kinds of sharpener, and I, I don't have all of them here because I don't have a mechanical sharpener. Uh, but you can get an electric sharpener. Um, those are really good for like sketch pencils and hard lead, things like that, to get a quick point. Um, sometimes they can be really aggressive, and if you have it in there for more than a couple seconds, it'll chew away half your pencil. So be careful. Uh, the more common kind is going to be these handheld jobbies. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, the important thing is to just make sure they are sharp. Some of them, like this one, you can actually get replacement blades for. So once you get the sharpener, you just buy the, the refill blades. It's not really that expensive, um, but it, it is nice if you kind of have a favorite one and all you want to do is keep the blade sharp. Uh, one like this is going to be a lot harder to replace the blades, but this one was honestly like 80 cents, I don't know. Um, but it has a nice little catch-all for your lead. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and then there are some like this, that the trappings are really fancy, but it's pretty standard. Um, and it has two different uh, lead shapes. So one is kind of short and squat, that's good for colored pencils, and one is long and pointy, that's good for graphite. Um, handheld sharpener is kind of my favorite because you can really control it. A good technique is to put the pencil in and turn the sharpener. <laughs> Instead of turning the pencil, you're a lot less likely to break your lead off like that. Pro tip. Semi-pro tip. Another thing to note in sharpening is going to be uh, knife sharpening or carving. This one, obviously, you have to be careful. But if you have a small craft knife, and especially if you have a sketching pencil like this, as you can see, it is rectangular. And this one is made to be knife sharpened. I mean, the wood peels off pretty easily. Um, so carving is good. It's a little, you know, obviously risky. Be careful. Blade goes away from you. <laughs> uh, but you can definitely control how much you are... Um, you know, how much wood you're taking away, how much lead you're taking away, and the shape of your lead. Uh, the other way to kind of control your lead, which I like, is a sanding block. So this is really fine sandpaper. And this is good for softer pencils like this one, um, and charcoal, where you just want to point your lead a little bit instead of taking away the wood. You know, it, it, it's kind of a waste to try to grind it down and you lose a lot of your lead that way, especially if it's soft. So then you would just, I don't know if you can see the difference there, it's very pointy now. So you just uh, slowly carve away a little bit onto your sandpaper. And then as you use it, you just peel it off um, and you have more. It's great. So this is called a sandpaper lead pointer, I believe. <laughs> so um, I guess the takeaways here are you really don't need anything fancy to get started with drawing. Um, as soon as you, you know, kind of find the sort of drawing that you like, um, just sort of uh, focus in on that and it, it becomes more fun. So, you know, if you're like, hey, you know, I'm doing pretty good, I'm going to buy myself some art pencils, do it. You know, it's something new and, you know, you might find that you really like using a certain hardness of lead. It's all kind of an experiment, but to get started and to really, you know, uh, kind of find your find your style, find your niche, it, it doesn't take a lot. It takes literally a piece of paper and a regular number two pencil. So I hope you guys have learned something and enjoy this, and I hope you join me next week when I get into more lessons about drawing. Um, remember to subscribe to the Westland Public Library's YouTube channel and click the bell for updates. See ya!